Hi, I'm Jack Penn, and uh, welcome to the show. We're here on the Mystery Pool podcast for another look at today's world of magic, mindfulness, and meditation. I have here with me my guest, Vittoria Soliman. Just before the show, we were talking, and I think it would be a good idea for you to just to tell our audience who you are and what you're about. Hi, Jack, and thanks for having me on the show. Well, my journey into magic and meditation really only came about through my martial arts training, and after that, I first began the Frank Martin tradition of spirituality and began to get involved in spiritual practice. Wow, that's great. Uh, could you just, like, tell us a bit more about that? Sure. Well, I was at this party, and some guy had some ayahuasca, and after that, it just all seemed to fall into place. It wasn't exactly what you call coherent or well-ordered, but it was definitely a transformative experience, and I'd recommend it anyone to try it. <laughs> wow, that's far out. So literally anyone can get into this. Well, there was this one guy that gave some to his cat, but his cat was never really the same after that. You know, jumping at shadows, mice that weren't there, and he had trouble walking or even remembering to eat. So when I say anyone, what I mean is that any human being. <laughs> okay, so moving on. Y- your claims to knowledge are vast, and you have a great deal of it. I wondered, what's your background, and how did you come by this knowledge? Well, I studied towards my master's degree in law, but that subject is only vaguely related, so it was really the magic that inspired me. I always had this knowledge ever since I was a little child. Wow, far out. So, so you were like born with it and stuff. You didn't study any ancient languages or anything like that. That's right. Wait a minute. We, we've got another guest here that wants to come in here. I, I'm just going to put Nunya Robertson on the second line. Hi, Jack. Hi, Victoria. I think there should be a distinction between knowledge and wisdom, just like Frank Marden said in his work, Indoctrination into Genetics. That's interesting, and uh, how might we define the distinction between knowledge and wisdom? That's an interesting question. I'm not really sure, so I'll have to read Marden's books again, but I guess the answer might be found in the study of ancient languages or the language of angels. (laughs) Wow, far out. And do you speak any ancient languages? No. Okay, I'm just going to bring in another guest here and see what they have to say about it. This guy's really cool. He goes by the name of the Spiritual Warrior. He's basically Superman, and you can check out his videos to prove it. Hi there. Hey there. One of the translators of uh, Corpus Hermeticum should have translated the opening line in a more mindful way. I think that if I were translating the Corpus Hermeticum... I would have translated it rather differently. It's the same with very old Chinese ancient meditation texts, which are sometimes translated as to calm the mind, or sometimes to be silent. Wow, that's far out. So, do you like speak any ancient languages and stuff? I mean, have you translated any Chinese or any other text like the Corpus Hermeticum? No. That's interesting uh, how this knowledge is simply received, as if by magic. That's it right there. It's magic, like Merlin, or Giordano Bruno, or any of the great Imagineers of the past. Lao Tzu, Jesus Christ, Walt Disney. Okay, so I have a caller on the line here, and we're just going to take a quick call. Hi there, and welcome to the Mystery Pool Show. The difference between knowledge and wisdom might not be from the works of Frank Marden, but could also be hinted at by ancient philosophers, such as Plato, Xenophon, Aristotle, or Pythagoras. Oh, wow, far out. So, do you, like, speak any ancient languages? Yes, several. I've mastered Latin, but I'm working on my ancient Greek each day, and have done for the past half-dozen years or so. I've also translated the Corpus Hermeticum in full, from the Latin. Wow, that's interesting. So, how would you define wisdom? Sapientia, 
in Latin. As with very many Latin nouns or verbs, it has several meanings, one of which is wisdom and is usually translated as such. Gnosis is the ancient Greek. Okay, so that's all we're going to hear from you right now because I don't think you have enough knowledge and wisdom to be able to appear on my show. But thanks for your call anyway. What was your name again? Thanks for having me. As an aside, knowledge comes from the Latin verb skichri, often translated as to know, as Heinrich Cornelius Agrippa von Nettesheim once wrote. Okay, so we seem to have lost the connection there. Maybe the line went dead or something like that. Who was that guy? I think his name was Mick or Mac or something. Anyway, moving on. I want to bring in the spiritual warrior. Um, Giordano Bruno was mentioned, and I know you have a keen interest in him and his works. That's right. I have commissioned several translations of his works and am well acquainted with very many of them. Well, far out. But as far as I understand, not very many of them have been translated into English, so it's great that we're finally making them accessible for the first time to the English-speaking world. Hi, the line went dead there. My name is Max, seeing as you asked. Maxwell Lewis Latham. As I was saying, there are sometimes a dozen or even two dozen different meanings to some Latin words, spanning entire pages in some of the deeper lexica. So when you're reading Giordano Bruno in translation, you're really only getting the tip of the iceberg. It is said by Gilberto Strapazon that mercurial angels especially enjoy communicating in Latin because of its brevity. And there are two heads of the earth zone which have Latin mottos. One is from Tacitus's annals, another from juvenile satires. One head of the earth zone even has the portrait of Hippocrates on her desk. Hi, Mac, or Max, or whatever your name is. I think we may have been cut off again. It's a shame, because I enjoy talking to that guy. Not to worry, it must be the gods or something like that. Anyway, I think you're right. This knowledge or wisdom, or whatever you want to call it, just happens. It just happens by magic. You don't need to read anything or make any kind of serious study to understand the deeper mysteries. It's magic. Well, far out. But you have, like, books and stuff, right? Yeah, I have a magic book. Well, far out. So is that like a diary or something? Totally. You got it. Sometimes I like to put little drawings in it and write about my experiences. Me too. I love drawing. Nunya, are, are you any good at drawing? That's none your business. Okay, so do you guys ever use, like, AI, either for research or drawing? Oh, yeah, totally. I mean, why bother reading or studying or even drawing when you can have the machine do all the thinking for you? Wow, far out. I mean, just like the other day I was investigating this fast radio burst from another galaxy, I thought it might be like aliens and stuff, and as it turns out, it emanates from a constellation called Piscis Austrinus. Am I even pronouncing that correctly? Just go with it. It's cool. We all know what you mean, because it's just like, well, magic. Hi, I think we got cut off there again. It's pronounced Piscis Austrinus. And uh, I think we just cut, cut off again. I'm not sure what's happening with that. But anyway, like I was saying, I was using AI, and I discovered that this constellation was mentioned by an ancient historian called Stesias. And basically what ChatGPT told me was this fish was all to do with the mythology of a Syrian goddess. She fell into a lake one night, but a fish came to her rescue. It was a magic fish. Totally. Anyway, that's what it said, and it also said that nobody ate fish in the Near East at that time. What time was that? It's complicated. The source is Higinus, who can't be identified with any certainty, and who relied on older Greek sources, but he wrote in Latin, probably in the 2nd century AD. Our other source for this piece of mythology is the ancient astronomer Eratosthenes, although Aratus mentions it briefly. Eratosthenes was writing during the 3rd century BC. Anyhow, according to Heganus, she was the goddess Isis, allegedly, and that fish was set among the stars. What the AI won't tell you, 
and it bases its knowledge on Wikipedia, I might add, is that an extended account is found among the fragments in the Vatican, and that another parallel myth is recorded in the writings of Diodorus Siculus. Stesias doesn't even exist, except in the writings of other authors like Diodorus. Okay, I think we've heard enough from Mac, or Max, or whatever his name is. He obviously only has knowledge and no real wisdom. Totally. It wasn't received by magic, so it's not really the sort of thing we deal with here, like Merlin. Curiously, the first mention of King Arthur is in the writings of Nennius, which I have also translated in full, as well as the Corpus Hermeticum. Nennius wrote during the 9th century of the Christian era, but Arthur may well be alluded to by an earlier author, Gildas, writing in the 6th century, both writing in Latin, of course. Arthur was not mentioned as being a king, but Dux Britannorum, that is, a leader of the Britons, there being no definite or indefinite articles in Latin, unlike ancient Greek, naturally. Nennius also mentions Merlin, but under a different... Yeah, I don't think we need to know about that. It's not relevant. It's not magic. It's okay, gals. I've disconnected the phone line from the mains, so we won't be hearing from that guy again. What an asshole, right? Mm -hmm. Totally. Who was that guy? I don't know, but it's not the sort of thing we want to hear at the Mystic Pool. Absolutely. All the authors here we have at Black Falcon Books have at least 20 years' experience. He's not one of those. How old are you, Jake? I, uh, I just turned 20 last week. Wow, you look older. Anyway, I wanted to bring you back in, uh, Vittoria. Let's talk about your experiences a little bit with mercurial angels and how they've affected your magical practice. Well, the angel that presides over the magic of humor is called by an epithet, the god hidden in the darkness. But it has a Latin name, Dius Cali... Sorry, I'm having trouble pronouncing that. Uh, you know what, I, I'm just going to reconnect the line and see if we can bring Mac back in here. Thank you. It's pronounced Deus Caligne Tectus, and it's Psalm 717, which is best to invoke him. That is, Confitebor Domino Secundum Justatiam Meus, et Psalam Nomini Domini Altissimi. But the psalms in Latin don't always match up, either in number or in their wording, to the corresponding ones in English translation. Well, far out. Anyway, thanks for your time, Max. See you later, dude. Don't worry, I've blocked his number, so we won't be hearing from him again unless we want to. Okay, so I think it's time for another caller. This is an authority on prayer and meditation, and one of your personal favorites, Nunya. Hi, welcome to the Mystery Pool Show. All right, mate, I'm Bill Broughton. I'm a fucking expert in prayer. Well, far out. Um, what kind of exercises do you do to get your mind, body, and spirit in the right mindset for mindfulness and meditation and prayer? Normally, I look a geezer right in the eye, and if he looks at me funny, I knock him out, see? That way you get silence. Wow, that's, that, that's interesting. Uh, do you find that helps relax you at all? Uh, too right, it does. And if anyone else looks at me funny, they're looking for a slap too. Well, far out. Could you elaborate on that a little bit? Because I think our audience would like to know more about that. Well, there was this one geezer, and he comes up to me. And I was sitting there in my car, parking spot, minding my own business. He reckons it was his parking spot, but it was mine. I was just sat there minding my own business. He struts up to me, all dressed up as he was, right toffee nose prick. The geezer, he has a gumption to say to me, I say, would you mind clearing off? This is private property. So I says to him, I do mind and I ain't doing any harm. So he says to me, Look, I'm awfully sorry to trouble you with this, but my wife's trying to get to sleep, and the van's engine is running, and it's really not your place to be here, I'm afraid. It's rather late, and I must insist that you move it at once. So I looks at him, and I said, I ain't moving. To which he says, Do you know who I am? And I sees this other geezer walking down the street in his whistle and flute, and I says to him, Look, there's a bloke here, don't know who he is. Okay, well, that's an interesting story. I just wanted, wondered, what has that got to do with prayer or meditation? It don't. But I do have one prayer. 
Cool. W would you like to share that for our audience? Uh, sure, yeah, yeah, no worries. Uh, here we go. Hello, Dad, up there in good old Evan. Your name is well, great, and only, and we respect you, Gov. We hope that we can all have a butcher's at Evan and be there as soon as possible. And we want to make you happy, Gov, and do what you want here on Earth, just like what you do in Evan. Gov, please give us some, Uncle Fred and enough grub and stuff to keep us going today. And I hope that you'll forgive us when we cock things up, just like we're supposed to forgive them who annoy us and do dodgy stuff to us, because there's a lot of dodgy people around, Gov. Please don't let us get tempted to do bad things. Help keep us away from all the nasty, evil stuff and keep that dodgy Satan away from us, because you're much stronger than him, because you're the boss, God, and we'll be forever in it. Cheers. Paternoster, qui es in calis, sanctificator, momentum, adveniat redemptum, fiat voluntas tua sicut in calo et in terra bana nostrum cotidianum da nobis odie. Et dimite nobis demita nostra, sicut nemus, demitimus debitoribus nostris, et ne nos incitas in tentationem, sed libera nos a malo. Okay, I'm not quite sure how Max ended that back on the show, but uh, it's magic. So anyways, I'm going to wrap it up there. But thank you, Bill Broughton, and my other guests, Wataria Suleiman, Nunya Business Robertson, and The Spiritual Warrior. Next week, we'll be exploring the relationship between ancient wisdom and the claims of hermeticists nowadays that they receive their knowledge even before they were born. That's it from The Mystic Pool today. Bye. <laughs>